Using fritzing, advanced level, parts. The biggest problem with fritzing is parts, and that's because fritzing has a highly graphical third circuit design view. Most circuit design programs only have a schematic and PCB view. The bigger ones have a 3D render view, but that's not really for circuit design, it's more for spatial awareness. But fritzing has a third breadboard view with graphical pictures that are drawn in the not very common, not very well known scalable vector graphics standard. Most circuit design EDAs use a separate schematic and PCB drawing, which is bad because you have to do two selections, but is good when a part comes in different packages because you only have to change the footprint drawing. Fritzing, on the other hand, is all three views in one part. If you select a part, all three views are shown in an inspector. This is good in that you can have live views that are connected together because it knows exactly what part it has to put in each view. The downside is you have to make a new part for every different footprint that a part has. The three icons in the inspector allow you to spot a part before you pull it into the view. The most common question we get asked on the forum is people trying to find parts. The truth is there is no one location for all the fritzing parts and that's because people make personal parts and host it themselves so they could be anywhere and that means you have to search for it. And the biggest problem I see with people searching for parts is they're not tenacious enough. Searching for a part. We'll use this post as an example because nobody else could find the part. It's too risky searching for someone else's part based on a text name. People have spent hours making parts for someone else only for them to turn around and say that that's not the part. But this guy has done the right thing and put a link to a data sheet. At least now we know what it looks like. We'll start with the fritzing search. And it's specific part number first, N20. And there's no results. Next is a broad name, geared motor. And we get nothing. Next is even the broader name, motor. We find two parts which are probably good enough to fudge a sketch, but the poster wasn't too keen on them. If you're only interested in making a PCB, you'd also do a footprint search. Further down, it linked to an actual drawing of the fritzing part, and now we know someone did make a part. It's important that posters link to the exact part they're looking for, because it saves volunteers time looking for stuff. This linked to a sketch further down, but it had the wrong motors in it. So next we check on the fritzing forum. Then it's the same part number search, then generic search, and then broad generic search. And if there's no results, you have to do a broader search on the internet. And the easiest way I've found is to put the name in, but add fritzing on it. And then go images. And this makes it quite easy to spot a fritzing graphic. And if you still can't find it, go for a more generic name. Then just click on images that are suitable, and then go to their sites. This is the same one we saw before. But if we scroll down, this one looks more suitable. This looks promising, so we go to the site. We see the fritzing picture, but now we look for a repository for the sketch. And on this GitHub we see a .fzz file. So we download it. And we open it in fritzing, and we can see the part. Any sketch that uses parts that you don't have will automatically open the temporary bin. Then you can export the part and then import it back into Fritzing. Or a simpler right click, add to bin, my parts. Other things you could add to the search besides Fritzing is .fzpz, which is a Fritzing part extension, or fzz, which is a sketch extension. You could also add GitHub, because that seems to be where most parts are being held. After that you might have to do a text search, in case the guy didn't post a picture. Try the usual fritzing, or fritzing part, or fzpz, or fzz. This actual part had a good breadboard view, and a good schematic view, but the PCB view wasn't correct. But simple views like PCB and schematic, people don't mind fixing on the forum. It's a graphic intense breadboard view that you'll find trouble finding people to do for you. So if you're not prepared to do vector graphics, you might be out of luck. Fritzing part editor. Fritzing part editor can't do any graphical drawing. You need a third-party scalable vector drawing program, or know how to code directly in XML. It can only modify the non-drawn sections, or swap in a different graphic. There seems to be two groups that use fritzing. The larger group that only wants the highly graphical breadboard view. This is the most time-consuming to draw if a part isn't available. And the other group that are only interested in the PCB view to make a board. And it's this view where you can fudge stuff, because you only need the correct footprint. We'll start with the easier second group, because all they require is the correct part footprint. And we'll use this post as an example. The poster grabbed a generic IC from the core bin, then selected an SOW. The W is 16 pins in this case. But when you went to PCB view, the silkscreen was covering the copper pins. So now we search for an SO16 footprint we can use. We hover over the icon and see if we can spot the footprint in the inspector. 
we skip the first two because they are through hole and pull the SMD parts into the board and see if one matches. This one looks the best, so we need to put this footprint in our generic part. Just select and right click on the part, edit part, go to PCB view, file, show in folder, copy it somewhere. Close that. Right click our faulty generic part and edit that. Go to PCB view, then it's file, load image. Spark fun analogic, open. Then check if the pins are assigned and if they're not, assign them. And then just file, save as a new part. If you want to be thorough, you can fill in all the metadata and make it a specific part. A good substitute footprint for an external part is a row of header pins. Just pull a header into Fritzing, select the number of pins, then edit it, find the SVG in the folder and just bring it into your part. The other way to do it is find the SVG in the folder and copy it. Edit the drawing in third party software and just load it back in. And this brings us back to group 1, the group that want drawings. These drawings are a lot of work and it's not likely that anyone's going to draw them for you. So you have to decide whether you're going to learn how to do scale vector graphics. Scalable vector graphics is actually XML code that draws a picture when you open it. If you open it with a text editor, you can see all the code. Thankfully, we have free programs like Inkscape to do all the coding for us. All we have to do is draw it. The basics of drawing is you draw whatever you want, and then you put your pins and pads on the top layer. Then you group it into specific groups for fritzing. The rough specifics of a schematic drawing is that it's just a line drawing on a 100 thou grid. Schematic view is a shorthand representation using symbols, so everything is simplified. Things like big parts just end up a rectangle with pins. Fritzing's requirement for groups is that everything's grouped together in one group called silkscreen. Even though it's not really required for schematic view to have the pins on the top layer, because the pins are usually on the outside of the body of the part, basically it's hard to select the pin when it's under another object in Fritzing Editor. In schematic view that doesn't usually happen, but we'll still put our pins on the top layer for convention, which in Inkscape's XML editor is at the bottom of the list. Basically further down is a higher layer. Next we have is PCB view, and this is an accurate one-to-one -one engineering drawing that shows an outline and correctly positioned pads. The accuracy is important, or else things won't fit in real life. So you need a data sheet with accurate dimensions, or at minimum a part to measure the dimensions off. The fritzing groups are silkscreen, which is everything that's not a pad or a hole, basically the outline and text and anything else you want to add to the silk screen. Then below it, which is a higher layer, you have copper 1, and inside copper 1 there's copper 0. Copper 1 is pads on the top layer, and copper 0 is pads on the bottom layer. And if you're doing a through-hole part that needs pads on the top and bottom layer, you'd put all your pads just in copper 0. Because the copper 0 group is inside the copper 1 group, all the pads get automatically duplicated to the top layer. But if you're doing an SND part where all the copper pads are on the top layer, you'd move all these connectors to copper 1 and leave copper 0 blank. Rules for objects in copper groups is they must be a circle or a rectangle. Fritzing won't recognise paths or ellipses. Schematic view accepts lines. PCB drawings are not that hard to draw, they just have to be accurate. Lastly we come to the breadboard drawing, and this is usually the hardest one because it has the most objects to draw. If you want to follow Fritzing's convention of the drawing acting like the part in real life, you would draw the outline and pins like a one-to-one -one engineering drawing. The easiest way to do this is start with the PCB drawing, node select the board and just colour it in. Then just draw the parts and approximately place them inside the centre. So long as it looks close, it's going to be good enough. Everything in this drawing has to be all in one group called breadboard. And all the pads must be on the top layer or you have trouble selecting them in the Fritzing editor. My tutorials teach you how to do basic drawing in Inkscape and the formats they need to be in for Fritzing to accept them, along with a more detailed explanation of how to bring them into the editor and what to change in the editor to make it a specific part. If you've never done scalable vector graphic drawing, you'll make a lot of progress in a short amount of time watching tutorials. It's actually quicker watching a couple of hours of tutorials rather than stumbling around for 10 times that amount of time. Another thing is if you can find an Eagle CAD drawing of the part, you can convert it to a fritzing part and I've added an Adafruit tutorial video to my tutorial video post.